Do you know why I use a knife? What knife? Oh. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're taking a look at the DC Multiverse Dark Knight Trilogy Joker. Heath Ledger was the highlight of the film, but is this figure the highlight of the wave? Starting off with the packaging, and since this is the third figure in the wave we've looked at so far, I'm pretty sure we know the drill. Extra wide window box to accommodate Bane. I still say the Two-Face should have been two of four. Name and logo on the side. Superfluous sticker. Dark Knight Trilogy graphic. Acting bewildered over the fact that it's called a gaming wave. And so much Bane on the back. We get his picture, the key of his parts, and how to put those parts together. Together. Down here we see the other figures in the wave. Here's the part where I complain about all the space dedicated to Bane and not the figure in the box. And the almost ceremonial, for packaging, I'm giving the Joker one whole point. I was wondering what was going to break first, your spirit or your hobby? Moving on to presentation, Joker stands at just over 7 inches. Up front, and this figure's left me with some very mixed feelings. There are aspects that have been done very, very well, but also some corners that have been cut. Oddly enough, some of those cut corners are going to make me happy later. From the top, and I do think the likeness to Heath Ledger is better than the Two-Face likeness to Aaron Eckhart. I'm very happy with the paint apps for the makeup. I do, however, feel like the head might be just a bit too small. I often forget to talk about hair, but this one's been done really, really well. Not only is it a messy tangle, but the browns and greens really do stand out. Where McFarlane dropped the ball was the shirt and tie. In the film, the shirt had a hexagon print, and there was also a pattern on the tie. He should also be wearing a gray coat over the vest and under the long coat. There's also an unfortunate amount of paint slop connecting the two pieces. If you were looking to take that long coat off, just be warned, the vest is a facade and he has no back. And hey, as long as we're here, that's what this looks like. It does give me a very nice opportunity to comment on the chain. It's a separate, softer piece that's been glued to the pants. Criticisms aside, and I do like the two different shades of purple that were used, there's a very subtle amount of texture in the coat to make it feel a bit more real. Flipping it around, and here it is from the back. That said, eagle-eyed fans will notice something else missing. The coat should have a red lining. The broad strokes are there, but as they say, the devil is in the details. Especially with regard to paint applications. If all you want's a good basic Heath Ledger Joker, it's fine, but for presentation, I'm giving Heath Ledger Joker half a point. Moving on to posability, and there are some limitations. Heath's head's on a dumbbell joint, but because of that long, kelpy, old Greg hair, he can't really look up. Down, however, is no problem. In fact, because of the way the eyes are painted, I'd say that down is really creepy and cool. Moving down, and he can raise his arm just over 90 degrees. No rotator cuff, but you get a little bit of movement. At the very least, you get a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and McFarlane wrist balls nicely hidden by the cuff. Moving to the middle and his torso is a softer piece. It also has that deep, intoxicating kind of vinyl smell. You can hunch forward this far and only arch back this far. This is in combination to the articulation and also the long coat. He does have the typical McFarlane hips. They can kick over 90 degrees and despite the coat do a perfect split. He does have twist at the hip, double jointed knees, toe articulation, and ankle balls that are a bit hindered by the cuffs of these pants. You can get swivel but it's kind of fighting me. That said he has no problem with hinge and he does get a bit of pivot. The overall range on this figure is fantastic. The neck and torso do suffer a bit, but the rest of the joints more than make up for it. For posability, I'm giving the Joker one whole point. Moving on to playability, and in addition to a trading card and a figure stand, Joker comes with a really big pile of money. I am really impressed with just how well sculpted and painted this is. There's a lot of dry brushing to bring out the details of all those individual stacks. You also notice this gray piece down here. That's to accommodate a foot peg, but they painted the other side gray to match it. As a prop for figure photography, I'm really excited to have this, but I would have rather seen that extra paint budget go to the Joker himself. And speaking of the budget, there's no other accessories for the Joker. I understand that Warner won't let him have a gun, but this Joker was famous for using a knife. And then in the end of the movie, he beat the tar out of Batman using a lead pipe. Don't get me wrong, I love this, but I also would have loved it if the Joker got a bit of extra attention too. Especially when it comes time to talk about the build-a-pieces. We've got Bane's head looking pretty good, but they also gave us three pairs of alternate hands. That's 
pretty unprecedented. I am super excited and grateful for all the attention that they're giving Bane, but this is Heath Ledger's Joker. It was a career-defining performance and one of the most iconic presentations of this character ever. Can you mix and match him with weapons from other sets? Yes. Should you have to? No. Fortunately for the Joker, which isn't a phrase you hear that often, playability is more than just accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting off with just a few other Jokers for scale, and here we have the DC Direct Hush, DC Universe Classics, the DC Direct Justice League version based off of Alex Ross, Batman and Son, Arkham Asylum, notice he also has a chain, and the DC Essentials Deceased. Note that his coat is lined. And fear not, we'll be looking at some other Joker comparisons later in the video. Even though Heath Ledger's Joker never got to have, one for some Harley Quinns, and here we have DC Direct's Arkham Asylum, Mattel's Arkham City, Arkham City by NECA, Margot Robbie as she appeared in the Suicide Squad, and Margot Robbie as she appeared in Birds of Prey. For some other villains, and here we have Arkham City Catwoman, here we have Arkham City Rachel Ghoul, hopefully we get Liam Neeson, here we get the Arkham City Penguin, but for something a bit more realistic, here we have Colin Farrell from The Batman. Here we have Arkham Origins Deathstroke, would have loved to have seen him in the Nolan movies, Arkham Knight Scarecrow, Comic Book Hush, and The Dark Knight Two-Face. This brings us over to Batman and the Dark Knight himself. That said, for a couple of other live-action Batman, and here we have Batfleck and Battinson. What do you think of what we've seen so far of his version of the Joker? Send it off in the comments. For some other kind of realistic Batman, and here we have the Grim Knight. I think he could definitely make one of those wannabe Batmans from the beginning of the movie. And here we have Dark Detective, who I also think could have been one of those decoy Batman. Just for giggles, however, and here we have Arkham Knight Batman, the Libra Miho style page punchers. Honestly, these scale better than I thought they would. In just a two page punchers, this Batman might be a bit too short. But for my current favorite comic book comparisons, here we have three Jokers and Rebirth. For a relative scale comparison, here we have Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Of course, the one thing I know a lot of you have been waiting for, head swaps. First up, and here we have the McFarlane version of Arkham Asylum. The pegs aren't an exact match on this one, so you will have to be a little bit creative. The head's kind of a caricature, but with the right paint job, I think there would be something here. Obviously, because of how stylized this body is, I can't do a swap the other way around. Next up, and here we have Rebirth, which mostly uses the same body and articulation, but does have a different head and torso. Similar to Arkham Asylum, and Rebirth will require a bit of creativity with the pegs, and of course the head needs a repaint anyway, but put together, I find this one surprisingly good. Next up, and for one of my favorite Jokers, here we have the Three Jokers Comedian. This one might be my favorite so far. The high collar in particular really adds something. Other way around, and wow. I absolutely love this. Once again, you're going to have to get creative with the pegs, but this one pretty much has me convinced I need to get an extra Joker to do this repaint. Continuing with the three Jokers, and here we have the Criminal. Technically, you can do this, but I don't think it works. Other way around, though, and once again, I am very impressed. The great thing about the three Jokers is the faces are all basically the same, just with different expressions, so if you want that to be your standard head, you do have options. Just be aware that the neck is a bit thick and the hair might not go over it. And then finishing off with the three Jokers is this custom version. Version, it's a combination of the three Jokers clown and death of the family. Once again, this doesn't really work for me, but once again, this really, really does. I absolutely love the potential here, and if anyone wanted to customize this into their standard Joker, I think you'd have a winner. Also, if you're curious about death of the family, unfortunately I had to glue mine down, so I can't do that swap. Lastly, for the one I've been most curious about, and here we have Mortal Kombat 11. Thanks to the realism of the body, this combination looks fairly plausible, which is to say it looks like an actual costume Heath Ledger could have worn. The other way around would make for a very interesting Joker. I have the head sitting on top of the peg because it's unfortunately a bit too low, but if you can account for that and do a repaint, this would make for a very realistic Joker. While you can always add accessories from other figures on his own, this Joker simply doesn't have much to offer. As much as it grieves me for playability, I'm giving the Joker half a point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Being that he's part of a build away wave Joker retails for $24.99. If he was a single carded, $20 to $25 figure, he still would have come with his loot, but you'd need to be the judge of whether or not that makes it worth it to you. Between paint tabs and additional character-specific accessories, I think I've been pretty clear where I wish the budget for this figure went. Though it breaks my heart for price, I'm giving the Joker half a point for a dismal total of 3.5 out of 5. But Jason, some of you might be thinking, why didn't we look at any other Heath Ledger Joker figures? Don't you worry, that's a discussion for another day. It's all part of the plan. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.